Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're going to get back into Field of Glory 2 Medieval. This is the Storm of Arrows DLC, and we are currently doing the Battle of Cressy, and as a few people have pointed out, we may have a tough time winning this one. Uh, that's why I like when I play solo this game i like to play the historical battles because of course the ai can be really fine-tuned on these historical battles right when you play like a custom battle and you pick uh, i don't know something out of the ottoman empire against uh, the irish uh it's a little bit harder for the ai you know I always think the AI is pretty decent in this game, but with the historical battles, they've obviously really refined it down uh, kind of historically what, what happened. And also it's just easier because they know what the force composition will be. Uh, but when you play another human, then the custom battles really uh, become a lot of fun because you can match up things that you would never even guess would fight each other elephants and who knows what else uh but anyway yeah this has been a really good battle so far we're ahead you know by seven percentage points here how does this work well when you have troops that route like these guys right here you can see the light long bowmen and you can see their flag uh they kind of turn white here when they route out and they start running back well there will be command checks and the commanders try to get them to rally now if they rally uh this you know the the points uh that were uh, gotten, I guess, ill-gotten, I should say, uh, by the French against us will go away. And so things can rally if you have good commanders. Uh, but let's get down here back on the map and continue on. We're on turn 15, and I did want to look at the losses before we continue on. So uh, killed 687 for the French. We're at 285. Wounded 2087. We're at 877. So we're running a little bit better than 2 to 1. That's good. We currently have 1,049 troops routed, and or routing, I should say, and the French have 1787. So by all metrics, we're ahead, but this game, it always features a lot of back and forth, much like uh, medieval battles did historically. Uh, but let's just make sure we've moved everybody. We'll kind of go through every group we've got here. We've got long bowmen sitting here in the village of Cressy. Uh, they have low ammunition, so that means they'll be shooting at kind of half strength. And you can see their flag's starting to get tattered here a little bit. If we look at the information for them, uh, you know, they've got 323 of their 456 of their cohort. You can also see that there. And we've already moved them, so 0 out of 10 AP. Now, the great thing about these long bowmen is they are better against... Uh, they're better than the Genovese crossbowmen, which are the missile firers that the French have. And once they're low on ammunition and they get in sword fights, they're actually quite good at that too. Now you can see here are some crossbowmen that are just outside the village. We want to get rid of that as soon as we can because, you know, they can do damage even firing into the village. This group, uh, another group of long bowmen sitting here in the village. Then we have some hobblers that I just have sitting here more than anything, just kind of protect the town now if they get some crossbowmen up here or in their grill they can do a lot of damage to you know that kind of light foot or uh missile firers if they can get a hold of them uh but uh, as you can see these crossbowmen they've already routed out of here they've got the white flag they've been routed we also then have um, a little bit of cavalry and then we have two groups of hobblers here not the best setup for us i mean these hobblers aren't great going hand to hand at least i do have them behind these obstacles here and if i kind of pan up you can see the obstacles I always think this game looks beautiful. Maybe it's just me. I I, I don't know. Our cannon uh, back here is uh, really not great. I mean, it got disrupted because we backed it up. I just didn't want to lose the points for this thing routing. And it was right up here at the front, but it needs to be. As you can see, the height here is 100. And then there's this rise that comes up here. So the height here is 50, height here is 0, 0, 50, 100. So we're up here on the hill, and the cannon was right there firing down. Well, it's back here now. It has nothing in its line of sight. Come down here. We've got some more long bowmen. We've already fired there. Again, you know, if I had to do this over, it was kind of my first time. I messed around with this just for a couple of turns just to make sure I had in my head what was going on. Uh, but if I had to do this, but it's really my first time playing all the way through. If I had to do it again, you really want your foot probably up here on the 50 rise. 
um, and your foot here and your bowman here at 100 and just firing rain down on top. Now, once something gets locked in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can no longer fire missiles at it. Uh, we've got Welsh Spearmen back here, kind of sitting in, I don't know, call them reserve, if you will. There's a second line. Um, we have got the Black Prince. God, what a great name. You know, if you're, if you're going to be a medieval knight, I think you want your name to be the Black Prince. That just sounds badass. Uh, okay, uh, he's sitting here. He's decided not to get into it with these men-at-arms. You could go back and forth whether we should lock them up. If we right-click here, you can see on impact, the initial impact, we have quite a disadvantage. But once we get them locked in hand-to-hand -hand melee, uh, it's we're pretty good. I mean, our unit has a plus 35, but the initial impact is plus 40. So I keep waiting for them to attack us. Uh, and it hasn't happened yet. Okay, as we move down here, we've also got the Earl of Warwick sitting right here. So in the center, we've got the Black Prince, the Earl of Warwick, and the King uh, here. God save the King! King Edward III is just sitting back here uh, watching the battle, really. Then we have some bowmen here, and again, I want to change this, and I think what I'm actually going to do is this. Uh, they've got 10 of 10. They've got 10 of 10. I think I want to move... Now, I want to move them down here, but I can't. You know, it's their zone of control here, right? So normally I'd be able to move right here, but I can't because of zone of control. Now, we could turn and start getting into hand-to-hand -hand both of these units because we have secondaries here. Um, it's tempting. It's tempting because I'm... I've, I don't want to say I'm wasting this bow, but they're as of right now, they're just sitting back here. They still have quite a bit of ammo. Now, the problem is, uh, the problem is, is that they're not firing. They don't have anything to do. But if I get them out of here, we're only one deep right here. And we just cannot afford to let his cavalry get up here on the flat ground and start a flank attacking us all over. That's how you lose battles. Uh, let's look at these guys. They're at 0 of 10. They're in melee there. These guys can't do anything. This bow, though, I am going to back them up one. And the reason is, okay, so they have to do a, a cohesion check when that happens. The reason I want to back them up is I think maybe actually I can bring the spearman here and bring the bow over here, although he is now coming to the left flank. And maybe we should get over here on the left flank and kind of see what our situation is. Uh, we've got Longbowman here. We've already fired. We've got Welsh Spearman sitting on the 50 height. We've got Light Longbowman here. They have already fired. They still have two turns of ammo left. Uh, a lot of our bow is low ammunition. You get five turns of ammunition, and then after that, you go to half strength. So just something to keep in mind there. We do have some men-at-arms over here. But again, if I if I had everything being equal, if the French weren't up here already, I think what I would do is probably uh, move these men at arms down, move the bow over here, and move this bow. You know, move the spearman here and the bow right behind them, something like that. Uh, but as is, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that. Let's just go through, make sure there's nobody else we should move. Uh, I'm tempted to start scrapping it up with them. Uh, it's going to hurt in the first go, the impact, but then after that, uh, yi, yi, yi. so we backed these guys up. I like having these guys here just because they're backing up numerous units, even though it almost feels like they're a little wasted. We just got to make sure they don't break us over here to the left. These guys, I think I may run around here. We'll see. Let's go ahead and enter turn and see what the French are up to this time. More French foot arrives. Now, those are crossbowmen, or at least everything that's hit so far has been crossbowmen. Okay, we're still meleeing there, and ooh, we get hit hard. Good thing we kept those spearmen there. 7 to 46. These are uh, French men-at-arms, and they are the toughies. You see all this cavalry out here, and you think, well, the French... You know, uh, they um, are really, you know, what we have to worry about is the cavalry. Not really. It's their men-at-arms, and those guys are tough. All right? They held firm there. I mean, they took some damage there in the center. They're having a hard time. They're running uphill into spearmen and men-at-arms that we have. 
uh, and they're having a hard time gaining any traction. But as their men at arms come forward, they're just really hitting us hard with those. And we've got to have our men at arms get on their men at arms. Uh, and that's what we're going to try to do because then we can fight them mano we mano there. All right, let's hope those guys rally. Uh, they're almost off the map. Sometimes they'll run off the map and, you know, you know audio, see you, buddy. Okay, it's our turn, turn 16. Uh, let's take these long bowmen. Now, if we get these guys in hand-to-hand -hand combat, we have a huge advantage. Our long bowmen are just a lot better than these crossbowmen. In it, when it comes to hand to hand now you didn't see it there it's five to five but now we've got them locked in and there's just they can't get out of here right they're going to have to fight us uh hand to hand and that is a nice advantage for us these hobblers i'm bringing over here i may even bring them let's go back here because i think i want to go into that hex uh the cannon you can't really move it around with, you know, it's already got low ammunition. We fired it several times. I, I just don't think there's a good place to put it. I'm just afraid we're going to lose it. Now let's turn and fire on this. Now we have uh, two turns of ammunition with this crossbow group. So they're going to do more damage. Then we've got the hobblers here. Okay. Not a whole lot they can do. Um, although, I mean, we could try to wrap this up in hand to hand. Uh, or may I should start calling it melee since that's what the game calls it. I just always say it, you know, hand to hand combat. Um, but yes, melee. If I had these two units both on here, that'd be all right. But uh, I don't know, you know, their cavalry. I very much doubt they're going to come in the village. They get all kinds of penalties uh, for getting disrupted. This is rough ground here, so it would immediately disrupt their horse to come in there. So I don't think they're going to do much. I think we're fine here. Uh, we've got our crossbowmen here. Let's just keep, uh, let's search for uh, um, their men at arms. That's what I really want to hit with our crossbowmen. I don't see any in this vicinity right here. Maybe right here. Nope, that's crossbowmen. Let's just slug it out. Now, our longbow is better than their crossbowmen. We can just keep hitting them all day if they want to sit back here. Uh, we've got our spearmen here. Now, let's find... Oh, this is where they started to break through on us. Uh, yay, yay. Let's get our spearmen up here. Now, they're not going to be particularly great against them either. Let's turn and fire there. Boom. Boom. Don't do a whole lot of damage. They're going to be in trouble against that. We've got spearmen here. That's good, at least. It's better than the, the longbow, but uh, not, a, not a huge fan of that. As you can see, even in hand-to-hand -hand combat, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage right there. We could try to turn with these men-at-arms or here. Well, let's see. The Earl of Arundel. It doesn't, sh I don't believe he's locked in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but we can't turn because of zone of control. Okay, well, so be it. Uh, now then, who do we want to try to hit with our longbow? How about there? It's 11 points. As you can see, we're starting to do less and less damage. How's this going to look? Yeah, that's not great. We're not great on impact, and we're actually not that great on hand-to-hand -hand or melee once we get there. Uh, let's fire there. So 10. Let's turn and fire there with the light bow, 10. Now, where we got to be really careful now is he's trying to drive through here. And again, our big, uh, I guess, risk at this point is that he breaks through here somewhere uh, and he can get cavalry into the back. We just got to make sure that doesn't happen. Let's go through our troops, see if there's any other place we want to go. You know, that's just, again, I'm, I'm going to sit and wait a little bit. I don't think we have to, you know, get crazy here as far as I am going to turn these guys and maybe bring them over to the left-hand side because we've got a lot of men-at-arms here in the middle. Um, let's turn these long bowmen and get them over here to help if we need it. Uh, we could do the same with this, but I kind of like them here. Um, we could also scoot something up. Uh, we can't do it there. I was hoping I could go here because this guy did back off, but they've still got zone of control here. 
we, we do okay once we get into hand-to-hand. -hand. It may be time to get that going, but I'm not going to do it this turn. I think we fired all of our bow. We can't fire our cannon. The spearmen are just kind of sitting here for now. The Welsh. The Welsh! Come on, guys! Oh, uh, the Welsh just like to hang out, drink beer. Uh, okay, I'm going to bring this group over. This group's going to stay right here, I think, because he's already in the, you know, if he gets past these spearmen or past these crossbowmen, I want to have something behind here, but he's really got a chance to rip us up there. Let's look at this one more time. I just don't love it. I just don't love it. I'm being awfully patient. Well, let's go ahead. It's 18 to 13. All right, we got a melee going on uh, over here with our long, what is this, French mounted against our long bow. 6 to 11. He took 6, we took 11 in the casualties here, but the danger again is these men at arms. We'll see. Uh, and he hits over here. French men at arms against long bowmen again. Uh, this time we really hold our own. We got a pretty good dice roll there, luckily. 13 to 13 on that one. Uh, we'll, we'll take that. Uh, I, I was very worried about that. Now he tries to run in with the cavalry. Oh no, these are men at arms. But he's coming across those obstacles. So the POA modifier, we get a plus 32. He's coming uphill, so we get a plus 25 for that. But we're protected. Those obstacles are a big deal in this battle. Plus 100. And he ends up taking 20 enemy casualties on impact. We took 8, uh, but close combat will ensue. Oh, they were mounted. Okay, my bad. Well, that's really why we got the better of them. Uh, because they were mounted. Coming uphill across the obstacles, that's a tough go for uh, any mounted troop, certainly. Okay. Kind of zoom up here so we can really see what's going on. Six to seven, these long bowmen are holding their own right there, which we really need to do. And this is the melee that I wanted to get in because eventually, now we probably got a bad dice roll there, eventually we should just overwhelm those crossbowmen. Uh, we had some guys rally. Not those guys, though. <laughs> they ran straight off the map. But these guys rallied. Uh, they were in. They got a little disrupted, which really hurts. Uh, once you're in, you know, melee and you're dis disrupted, that's not good. All right, it's our turn again. Let's go look at the casualties. Uh, 720 to 318. 980 to 2189 on the wounded, 1787 to 1049. So we're still running about two to one, uh, looking good. Let's continue this melee. We want that all day. Uh, oh, and they broke. Okay, well, that's when you see auto break, it's because they lost more than 50% of their forces. Uh, and so you can see the combat, the POA modifier here was plus 31%, overall plus nine. Uh, long, long bowmen were greatly advantaged, all right, and that's what you always want to try to get to, right? Now, we didn't do a whole, you know, seven enemy casualties to our six, but they were already so far down in strength that they broke 20 to 13 again. All right, let's keep firing away here, even at half. Oh, no, they, they have full ammunition, so we'd really do some nice damage there. That's a 19. Nothing to do there. We've moved our hobblers over. We don't have anything left in the village. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, we've got our, you know, three rows of hobblers here. We're going to turn right here just to make sure if he breaks through, we've got a secondary line there. Uh, we want to keep that melee going. We've got an advantage. Uh, you wouldn't tell it by the results. Our casualties eight, his seven, but that will continue. Welsh spearmen are hanging on. Uh, again, I'm not going to cause the impact there, even if it may work to our advantage eventually. Earl of Warwick just sitting here. The king is sitting here. Oh, those are Welsh spearmen. Whoops. Um, Black Prince, Earl of Warwick, and there's the king. Got it. Okay. And then let's see. Our crossbow here. Let's just keep firing right into their grill. Um, these crossbowmen, they're behind everything, right? So they're not able to fire. But what I'm going to do is bring these guys around here because this is where the danger lies, right? If we look at this, you can see we're greatly disadvantaged there. Let's turn the spear. Now, this is bad mojo for us. But what I want 
are two units fighting the, the French men at arms, we're going to probably take a bad result. Actually, we didn't. 15 to 12. But now we help these guys out because these guys are deadly. And uh, I just don't want them to rout these guys right off the bat and let this uh, French mounted get through here. Now you can see we don't have good... Uh, metrics there so we're not going to take that again we didn't with the spearmen but i thought it was worth it so that we get a little two on one action going there uh so we're not going to take that one what about this well we get a really bad impact look there so we're not going to we're not going to go there uh then we've got our cross our longbow back here uh okay well we docked down a horse uh we've also got Men at arms out here, but again, really bad on the impact. I know some people that you know are experts at this game uh, would say go ahead and lock them up because turn after turn after turn you're going to be in melee. But my look at this is is we have got the advantage for missile firers, so we can just sit here. We'll sit here all day and just hit him with missile. Um, we don't have to be aggressive because we can hit we can hurt him much more from distance, even at half ammunition. Maybe should have hit this guy, but that's okay. I want to, you know, try to soften all of them up. And as long as we're not locked up in melee, we can keep firing here. He may be better off to lock us up, but he's going to have to come uphill across an obstacle. So we just kind of keep doing the same thing turn after turn. Where we have a melee advantage, we try to take it. Where we don't, we can just sit and wait, although he's got a lot of reinforcements coming. Now those, again, are all cross bowmen that we've seen so far anyway. All right, melee in the center. We're holding our own against the French men at arms, surprisingly. Uh, only 13 to 11 there. Oh, 7 to 7 against the cavalry, but now they back off. Cavalry has the um, opportunity to fall back, and you see that quite often. They don't have to stay in melee. Okay, now they charge the spearmen. You would... Oh, no, those are men-at-arms. My bad. And you can see that impact score, 21. This is one reason we would want to get them locked in melee. Because they can fall back, they can hit us impact over and over. So the next time that they're up here, I probably will try to lock them in. Impact, 13 to 8, and they fall back. So now the AI is starting to try to do that with the cavalry. Is We're going to hit you in impact fall back and then next turn they can do it again and they always have the advantage when they're charging uh okay it's 19 to 13 let's see does he oh this melee is going to go on here 10 to 12 but we're starting we're going to wear these guys down i hope uh that was why i got this into a two-on-one action 14 to 10 over here in the center so again we're losing just slightly most of these battles frankly uh but <clears throat> We're, we're wearing down a lot of his better troops. So we'll see. What's he got here? Uh, French bidets. Uh, not bidets. Are they bidets? No, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to call them bidets. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they'd probably rather be called bidets. They're men at arms. They're unmaneuverable. They're above average. Heavily armored. Uh, oh, that's this these guys. Let's look at the bidets. Uh, <laughs> Lightfoot. Okay, yeah, they've got javelins and light spear. I'm not too worried about those. Our long bowmen should carve them up. The only thing they can really do is get up here. Javelin only have a one or two range, so he's not gonna. He's gonna have to get up close to us. Uh, okay, there's a four. Now the problem is this is starting to get a little ragged. We're down to 301 here. If we get down to like 200 and what would this be? 228 men. We'll auto break. Uh, let's fire there. Okay, we do more damage there. Hobblar sitting here. I wish I had light bow there, but our light bow broke. Uh, we could try to get something there, but we're not going to. And then I wanted to get these spearmen down here, uh, and then we'll turn them. Okay, as we keep. Whoops. Uh, let's go this way. Who's locked in? Who's not locked in? Maybe I will go ahead and start trying to lock some of these in because. Ultimately, if they just keep doing impact over and over, they're going to really start to whittle us. Uh, but not there. I really don't want it to be there. This, we've got the advantage. We're going to keep meleeing there. Eh, seven to six. Okay. 
Still got our spearmen back here in reserve. Let's go ahead. We've got a uh, once we get into melee, we've got a win percentage of 83%. We have a POA modifier of plus 35%. Let's go ahead. Now, we're going to take a bad impact, probably. Oh, not terrible. Oh, he fell back. He said, nope, don't want any of this. Uh, and that's the advantage of cavalry. Uh, they can do that. Um, one thing we could do. Oh, we can start. We can now move this unit up. And maybe I will. And can we move him up? No, but we can move the Earl of Warwick up, and I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to take these crossbow, potentially, I'm not sure if I want to do that. The king, not sure I want to move him up. What I'll do is move the spearman over, uh, and so now we're three deep here, two deep directly in the center. We're two deep there. That's fine. I did, you know, I hate to have these crossbowmen over here being the ones that are holding the line here. Um... We'll let him keep meleeing with us. He's obviously got a, a nice advantage. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a draw for the most part. 13, 13, 75% draw, 13% lose. Let's keep meleeing. 12 to 12. Let's see what we got here again. 10, okay, we'll keep meleeing there. I want to get him the heck out of here, even if we're going to take a few more casualties. We've got him outnumbered. Uh, let's fire on that French cavalry. That's a seven. We could lock into battle here potentially, but I'm going to wait. Let's take these crossbowmen and let's look at these flags. Let's get around here, see what we're dealing with. Uh, let's hit you. All right. Just keep whittling away. Just hit this group over and over and over if we can. Uh, let's take this long bow and we'll just fire straight on there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, let's turn this this way. <sighs> These crossbowmen, I really want to get over here somewhere. Because now, we could put the spear maybe here and the crossbowmen there. And then these crossbowmen could go there. Maybe next turn. All right, let's look at the casualties. Uh, 778, 358. That keeps getting a little closer and closer. 1104 to 2377. 2040 to 1049. Again, it's about running about 10 to 1. Or to 10 to 1, I wish. 2 to 1. We're up by 6 percentage on routed troops. And let's end this turn. Okay, they had some troops rally there. Uh, we held firm. Now, that cavalry hit us. We took 19, so we had to take a cohesion check, but we held. All right, he's turning some troops. Charge! Oh, we got disrupted there. Uh, let's see. Enemy French mounted, men-at-arms knightly. Lancers plus 200, troop quality plus 50. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Uh, our English men-at-arms, heavy weapon plus 100, plus 25 uphill, troop quality plus 50. He, he ends up with a plus 24% modifier there, uh, at least at impact. And we took 25 to his 6. Yeah, we got to get those guys locked in eventually. Oh, they got charged again. That time we did a little better, 6 to 4. But, you know, enemy unit plus 24%. All right, he's running up these javelineers, the bidets. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh, come on, buddy. Come and get it. Okay, there's melee. Nine to seven. That happens automatically when these guys are locked in, and then they melee here. Eventually, we're going to really wear <laughs> those men-at-arms down, you would imagine. Uh, four to nine. We're losing all of these melees across the front, and a lot, a lot of places... Uh, you know, we've got long bowmen up against cavalry. That's, you know, our long bowmen are pretty good sword fighters, but they're not, you know, superior quality. Okay, it's our turn again. We've got our long bow here. Let's see what these javelineers, what we could do to them. Well, not a whole lot. Then let's try to hit that cavalry there. Does eight hobblers here? I'd like to get the hobblers into these guys because they really tear up foot, uh, light foot, I should say. 
Nothing to do here, really. Uh, it's not terrible. I'm going to go after him. Let's do it. Let's get a, let's get, oh, he fell back. I wanted to get him locked in there with us. Uh, no such luck. Okay, nothing to do there. Let's see, do we like, yeah, we like our odds there. So let's go ahead and just keep going there. Our casualty seven, his five. Well, all right. Um, down here, well, he doesn't have anywhere to back up to. I'm going to lock him into combat. Now, uh, impact, let's hope we don't, ugh, we took a 32, and, uh, but their general has fallen. Nice. Uh, okay, we were greatly disadvantaged there. He had a plus 56 at impact. After that, though, uh, enemy, com oh, commander in charge has fallen. Uh, now they had to do disruption checks for everything. We killed their, their king. Uh, awesome. Okay. Well, we'll certainly take that. C and C, you see, commander in charge. Uh, we, so, well, it was worth it just for that. Um, he, this unit can now move forward. And I think I want to do that. Yeah, let's move him forward. Let's get locked in there now. Again, we're going to take some hit on the impact, but if we can get him locked in there, he doesn't have anywhere to fall back to. And now let's get the king. Uh, Actually, you know what? I didn't want to do that. Let's undo that. Let's take the Welsh Spearmen. Let's put them there. And we'll try to get locked in here in a minute. The king probably should come over there. But for now, I'm going to put the spearmen. Um, okay. Awesome. So we've come down all this way. Uh, you can see I have the uh, command range on there. You can see how far his command range is. Uh, Edward. These guys. Is this the group I want to put down here? Because he's, I mean, we're not too deep there. Let's back up. Let's actually put the king here. I'm fine with that. He's got a huge command range, so that's not a problem. So the king goes there. We're too deep here, which is fine. And then we could scoot here. But the problem is I don't want to do that until this is a little bit resolved anyway. Uh, win, draw, lose. Well, okay. 11 to 11. I'm just trying to get these men at arms the heck out of here. Any, you know, even if it's close, I'm just trying to whittle them down two on one. Um, gosh, I feel like I'm wasting some of this bow back here, even though they're, am well, this guy has not shot any ammunition at all. Probably should back him up. I've got two one here. So if he did break through, eh, let's go all the way to the left. Let's turn. This long bow, we could get into hand-to-hand -hand with him if we wanted to, but why do that? We can just chip away. So that's 12. Let's two, Let's fire here. Looks good. Let's actually turn and fire there, because they just keep taking a run at these guys. This bow, let's hit there. Uh, do we want to lock up there? Well, I'm going to let, let's turn. Yeah, let's do it. It's going to be a two-on-one eventually, but ah, he fell back. Okay, well, sure, buddy. If you're scared, just say so. Um, let's fire right there. They're already disrupted. This horse is in not great shape either. If I had this long bow unleashed, it's kind of like when you're playing chess. You got to try to get all of your pieces <clears throat> active out on the board, right? You just don't want to end these guys. I'm What I'm doing is trying to make a two deep line, but because of that, they're, they're kind of trapped, you know? Uh, they're not able to do what they should be doing. Okay, well, I think that's the end of this turn for us anyway. He fell back, held firm, charge, impact. Okay, they're really hurting these guys. We took 22. Uh, we held firm, but we're getting, you know, beat up there a little bit. He hits our spearmen there. Spearmen hold on just fine. Enemy casualties eight. We took nine. 
Now we can afford, well, we can't afford that. We just fragmented there, those men at arms, not liking that. Uh, he just threw his javelin at us, 14, the bidets. Okay, here comes a lot more of them. We're going to want to lock them into hand-to-hand -hand combat. The problem is, is this unit's gotten a little tattered. Uh, so we got to be careful there. Melee in the center with his men-at-arms. Two times. Oh, that time we disrupted him. Finally, he's starting to break a little bit. Uh, okay, melee. Even. Even. 9-9. Nine to nine. Melee in the center. And now he starts to break a little bit there in the center. He held firm, actually, but he took a 20, so he didn't take a cohesion test. Uh, we're starting in a few places here to wear him down. The problem are these guys. Now, luckily, we have this longbow here, and I think we got to bring one of these other longbows over because I think we're going to hold on here. And when he goes away, we'll move the spear down. We'll move the longbow down. And I think we actually, well... These guys, we won't move down, and we've got an obstacle there. This time, let's start on the left, and we'll take this long bow and start firing away. Ten points there. Uh, I'm just going to leave that. If he wants to come after our spear, he's certainly welcome to. Let's turn and fire there. Five. Let's turn and fire there. Seven. Okay, uh, fire there, 11. You can see why it's okay if we lose slightly on a lot of these hand-to-hand -hand combats or melees because we're doing so much range damage that it, you know, we're wearing him down faster than he's wearing us down, or at least we hope so. Now these guys, I am going to turn these guys uh, and I'm going to get him out over here because once this breaks, these longbow are up here on top of the hill all by themselves. He, If he can get cavalry back here, we're in a whole hell of a lot of trouble. Uh, nothing to do there, I don't think. We've hit that several times. Let's fire there. Okay. Let's get the spear engaged. We're going to charge them. Now, we'll probably lose bat on the impact, but we'll see. Nope, five to five, and now he had to drop back. Excellent. Uh, how's this looking? We want to keep doing that? Yep, looks like we do. Let's keep meleeing there in the center. Nine to eight. Uh, okay, let's keep that melee going. You see a bunch of green, and that time we really hurt him. 29 to 11. This spear, let's get him engaged. Uh, anywhere where you can go two to one. Uh, we took 11 to six there. But now we've got him disadvantaged. It gives us another bonus because we're coming from two directions or with two different units. And now he's disrupted. He's in a you know bit of trouble there. These guys, now we don't do well at impact. But look, he's already worn down. I'm going to go ahead and do that just to start trying to wear him down even more. Uh, nothing really to do there. Hobblars, I want them over here to start taking on some of that. These javelin guys. Um, let's lock them in hand-to-hand -hand battle with these guys. Melee, eight to six. That way they can't fire missiles at us. Even though these guys aren't in great, ooh, we got hurt there. 20 casualties to his four. We're now disrupt, ooh, we're in a little trouble right there. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to take these hobble R's and come over here. Um, because if these guys break, we can't have him getting in the village. Nothing more to do there. Nothing there. We're in, you know, melee combat all around there. We've still got this well contained, I feel like. Let's go to the casualties. 867. Uh, okay, it's not quite 2 to 1 now. Not quite 2 to 1 there. Uh, not quite two to one there. So, I mean, we're maintaining a nice almost two to one advantage. It's 19 to 13, but let's end turn 20. Melee there, we held firm. Amazingly, we held firm. Let's hope he can keep doing that until I can get these longbow over there. Uh, now they charge with the cavalry. Not a whole lot doing there. Uh, here come a bunch of javelineers. Looks like we pretty much weeded out all the crossbowmen. I don't think he's fired crossbow at us in a very long time. Uh, okay. Melee. 
10 to 6. Melee. Oh, that time he almost broke. 28. Uh, it looks like, oh, he's disrupted. He's just about done there in the center. Same here in the center. We're starting to really win this battle in the center. Uh, and now the men-at-arms men auto break. So this starts going very nicely for us here in the center. Then they broke in the middle with continued. And everybody had to do a check there. Melee. He fragmented the javelin did because we were in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The impact we didn't do so well. There we did quite well. And now it's up to 24 to 13. And his men-at-arms just dispersed. They're out. Uh, this is going to work well to our advantage. I'm going to play another turn here because now I think we've got him really on the ropes. 24 to 13. Let's get down here. Uh, Longbowman, let her fly. Loose. Uh, that's 11. Spearman. Yeah, let's lock you up. Let's lock you up. He's really been hurting this group. We took 11 to 7, but that's okay. Uh, loose with the light bow. Okay, more eight there. We could try to lock in there, but I don't want to get too aggressive. We're in really nice shape there. Loose there, and now we're going to move these guys down. Is that true? Is that what I want to do? Welsh spearmen are who I'm going to move down. Uh, but before we get them locked, make sure before you get them locked in hand-to-hand, -hand, take your fire if you can. These guys I was going to move out here, Do we need to do that? Hmm. Welsh Spear is going to get into it with them. You saw a lot of green there. We have every advantage. They're almost done, and now they've broken. Uh, the Longbowmen we're going to get up here when we can. These Longbowmen... start hitting things in the center now i could move down there so that would then allow these guys to move up and they could you know now start unleashing these guys are going to move up next turn and we'll finally have the bow where i want it now what i'm worried about is this unit right here because if they break we've got men at arms here certainly but we've got light bow there long bow here i just think we're better off bringing this around here uh, I don't necessarily want to, but I think it's the smartest thing to do. We just, again, to win this battle, we can't let the French cavalry get into the to the back. Uh, here, we'll continue that melee. All right, 28 to 4. We put the hurting on him there, and now he's fragmented. We'll shoot straight forward there. Uh, 9, that looks good. We can't move those bow up yet. Oh, let's... Do, 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 do. do we want to hold these guys in reserve or do we want to put them right there? Because then we could start getting into some of this on the hilltop. Yeah, we've still got the king back here. Let's get these guys moving forward and turned. So let's charge and impact that group and we should do okay. Now on the impact, we don't do well and we're disrupted. But once we get these guys, in, they can't fall back. So they can't charge us and fall back. They're going to be locked in melee with us. Uh, let's see. This is good. Uh, we're just going to keep the Black Prince right there. We're going to continue this melee. And that time we auto-broke them. And now it's 28 to 13. Uh, if we can get him to 40 before we're to 15, we win, we win this battle. Uh, longbow. Did I already fire that? Boy, I sure as heck don't remember that, but I guess I did. Um, men at arms, we could go ahead and lock this in. Nah, I don't even like that once they get down to melee. Uh, this, mm, I don't like that impact. I think we're in very good shape right now, so I don't want to do anything too crazy. Uh, let's do this. Let's turn him this way, just in case these hobblers get in trouble there. Otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape there. Uh, <coughs> these longbow, let's fire at the javelins, guys. 
uh, let's get locked in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the javelin. Now, we always take bad impact with the javelin, but once we're in here on them, uh, we get in pretty dang good shape. These guys here, I want to turn and get them in hand-to-hand -hand with the javelin guys. Five to four. Spe you know, it's Hobbelars against javelin. It's uh, going to be pretty even there. But he can't charge the horse into town. Uh, and so we should be able to rip that up pretty well there. So I think we moved everything. I'm going to turn the turn, and I guess we're going to come back for a fourth episode. Uh, this battle is really... Uh, taking it a little longer than I hoped, but we're actually doing quite well. First time through, I'm pretty happy with this. We're up 18 percentage points, 31 to 13, and we've got a lot in trouble out here on the map. The enemy general has fallen, um, and you can see now he's having to bring his second line of cavalry in, but we're in great shape up here. Uh, there, we hold really strong because of these obstacles, and if you ever play this battle against another human... You know, hide your longbowmen behind those obstacles because it really makes them almost an impossible unit to move. Uh, but I think I'm going to call this an episode as soon as this uh, resolution's done. And when we come back next time, we're going to try to finish off the French. If we can get them to 40% before we get to 15, we will have won this battle. If overall we just get them to 60%, we win the battle. Uh, you can see, oh, he held firm that time, but he, this group is getting really ready to break. Uh, melee, we're doing well in that melee. You can see he's got a heck of a lot coming here, but we're starting to fragment things as as these uh, bidets <laughs> continue to uh, get into us here in melee combat. We just have a huge advantage on them. Uh, you know, when we do that, uh, especially with Hobbelars. Uh, so anyway, okay, looking good. 31 to 13. I'll talk to you next time. Round four. Adios.